This is Tom Renakian. This is my 11 must do tips for blood flow and circulation. And I added some secret tips that people are missing and really messing themselves up with and kind of wasting all of 11 of these. So make sure you watch this list because I use this with my patients every day and we're starting now. Blood clots are an actual clump of platelets. We have a great video about that. Arteriosclerosis is fat and plaque buildup on the walls of your arteries. This prevents blood flow from actually getting to your feet or your hands. What we're talking about is poor blood flow and congestion in the form of varicose veins, lymphedema, edema. This is when the blood due to pressure and health issues backs up. It swells these vessels. Your ankles swell, your feet swell, you get varicose veins. Starting the countdown, I go over this with my patients personally. This is what works for mine and what doesn't. I see a ton of patients every day and there is some secrets because what you think might work doesn't always work. People wanna focus on the pills and the supplements but that's only gonna help like 5% of the time. Number one, compression therapy. These are your compression socks, your running socks, your braces. Using compression socks or sleeves can dramatically help increase the circulation. This applies pressure to the legs and helps shoot that blood flow back up to your heart, thus making your heart have an easier time pushing it down because there's no congestion in your feet. Swelling is kind of like a traffic jam on the highway. Arterial disease is kind of like the road being blocked. So if there's construction and the road's shut down, that's a blood clot or artery disease. If there's a traffic and you can't get anywhere, that's swelling. Compression works really well for varicose veins and edema, but horribly for arteriosclerosis. That's why some people hate compression cuffs. This will actually make your nighttime pain worse and compress your arteriosclerosis. So sometimes too much swelling from lack of movement can prevent your heart from pumping. In the Wild West, they used to actually tie people to trees and people would die from lack of movement and their lungs would fill up with fluid and their legs and their heart could not pump blood against that stuff. That's what's happening to people these days, sitting on the couch, watching Netflix, working from home. We're gonna go over all that. Compression socks can help. They can push that blood flow. They don't let it expand. They don't let it engorge. They just did a study where they put compression socks on professional video gamers and they had a dramatic relief in swelling and pain in their legs. A study in the Annals of Internal Medicine in 2013 found that compression socks significantly reduced leg swelling and improved venous blood flow in individuals with chronic insufficiency. What I always tell people to do is buy an over-the-counter sock first. Don't buy the crazy doctor prescription ones. Number one, the insurance system sucks. Getting them reimbursed is a struggle. Insurance systems don't like paying for medical equipment these days. You wanna buy an over-the-counter like 10 to 15 millimeter of mercury sock. Start with that, five to 10 millimeters of mercury, 10 to 15 or 15 to 20. Insurance pays for like 20 and up if it pays at all. A lot of the times it doesn't. And people find that too much compression is so uncomfortable, it cuts into your skin, it causes issues. So start with the light compression first. It's better than a prescription. You can also do the ankle sleeves or uh, the compression sock. Number two, regular exercise. I already mentioned people sitting on their butts on the couch at the computer, you know, we're all guilty of this, especially since COVID in 2020. Studies show engaging in physical activities such as walking, cycling, swimming, promotes blood flow and gets your body used to circulating. It releases those good natural hormones and gets you in better shape for the future. What happens is there's a good rule. You wanna get up for at least a couple minutes, at least once an hour. That's what makes sitting on an airplane so tough. Even getting to the bathroom can make a big difference in preventing blood clots, swelling. You wanna push down with your feet as much as possible. What I do is even in a chair, you can kind of hover your butt like an inch up. That's a leg pump. That actually pushes a lot of that fluid. Do a leg pump a couple seconds up and down, like a set of eight or 10, that can really get that blood flow pump in. So once an hour, even if you're on a plane or a train or a computer chair where you can't get up, just do some light calf raises. Like we're talking one to two minutes per hour. Try and do at least a minute every hour. The Journal of Vascular Surgery in 2017 said that doing these interventions, getting up, walking, moving, simple, easy stuff, led to dramatic improvements in foot and ankle swelling, circulation, and that makes a big, big difference. The top five exercises, walking, getting up and moving around. The body weight pushes all that blood 
through your legs, you have valves in your calf muscles where the blood can't come back. One press or one flex of the muscles will shoot all that blood flow up. That is very good for you. It helps your heart and gets you in healthy, good shape. I saw a study that said, essentially, if people sit for three hours or more, that is more unhealthy than smoking. That's how bad not moving is. Get up every hour for at least one minute. Even just press your legs down against the floor if you're on a plane. Half raises. So simply sitting in a chair and lifting your calf muscles up. So push down with your thighs and lift with your calf muscles. It's so simple, I don't even need to show it. Just push up and down, that will move the blood flow. You wanna do at least a minute or two every hour. If you're sitting for more than an hour, it's just as dangerous as smoking, I've seen some studies say. Every hour you wanna stand for one minute and just push up. Even if you're sitting on a plane or a car, you don't have to actually lift your body. Just putting that pressure against the bottom of your feet will push that blood flow through your calf muscle. That's all you gotta do. There's never an excuse, even if you're stuck in a little cube. The next one is leg raises. If you're laying in bed, lift up your legs. So lift up your legs in bed, and I'm talking like five to 10 times, that is enough to get that blood circulating and moving that makes a big, big difference. Ankle pumps. So same thing, just moving your ankles, that alone, it seems like nothing, but that will get that blood flowing. And consistency is the key. Like once an hour, if you're on the plane, train, like I said, or on the couch, lift your legs or walk to the bathroom. If you have a broken leg or something, lift your legs up. That makes a big, big difference. Rates of blood clots are increasing because people are not moving and other factors today. So get up every hour because sitting for three plus hours is the, one of the biggest risk factors. And bicycle kicks. You can sit on your back, move in your leg, pretend you're riding a bicycle. A huge difference. They're easy. Sim it's almost too simple, but the studies are there, especially in the hospital, in planes, it prevents blood clots. Number three, strength training. Strength training's huge. If strength training was a treatment, everything else would be way behind. I watched that uh, Steve Prefontaine running movie where he was setting all those records and he was like one lap ahead of everybody uh, in the 70s. This is what strength training is. Strength training doesn't mean heavy weights. It means you could basically be sitting in a chair and getting a start. You could be really out of shape and getting a start. You could be a senior, 70, 80, 90 years old, and basically lean against the wall or air squat. I've had patients who could barely get up out of bed, build up strength gradually. It's never too late. Don't give up. You get your best gains immediately. Strength training is more important than walking, running, everything. That gets your good hormones up. It gets your blood vessels nice and strong. It gets your hormones flowing. So here's specifically what studies show. It gives you vasodilation, number one. So that means your blood vessels get used to opening. Number And that's shown in the journal Physiology in 2005. It gets nitric oxide production. So your blood flows healthier and more nutrients. That's a study published in the American Journal of Hypertension showing that nitric oxide is produced by strength training. Improved artery function. As you have higher strength, your arteries get stronger. The European Journal of Applied Physiology in 2013 showed this. Get some strength training in. Do some air squats. Do some calf lifts. Increased capillary density. People who strength train, so even just like standing up on your toes, doing air squats like this, that gives you more blood vessels, it perforates better, and that's proven by the Journal of Applied Physiology in 2010. This is a great chart summarized by Coach Barkley, but in just two to three sessions per week for about three months, you gain about three pounds of lean muscle strength, better strength, better metabolism about five plus pounds of lost fat, stronger bones, stronger metabolic rate, better weight management, and better blood sugar, less diabetes. Who doesn't want that? This stuff is amazing. Everyone has time to do it. It's the best investment you'll make. And much less peripheral arterial disease. Strength training, if you can do it, more important than anything else, gradual strength training throughout your life. And we specifically show you foot-specific exercises. I link that below, but I do a guide where I show foot-specific strengthening exercise to improve your blood flow down to your feet. Number five, leg elevation. Elevating your legs above your heart level. If you can't move, if you have a broken bone or joint, a study published in the Journal of Vascular Surgery in 2015 showed that leg elevation increases venous blood flow and reduced 
venous pressure in individuals with chronic venous disease. Elevating your legs can work really well, but I love these pumps. If you're at a desk or a computer chair, these change people's lives as well and really can reduce fatigue. Check the links below. Number six, massage therapy. So there's a lot of great stuff like skin brushing, which is using a big brush to brush your skin. There's massaging the legs. There's foot massagers. There's massage guns. I love all these things. Realistically, if you get home and you can use a foot massager, I link some of my favorites. I love foot massagers. I love calf massagers. And there's actual physical massage. Let me give you a story. When I sit and work at the computer, I got a lot of notes to do. When I see patients, and that can take me hours sometimes, I wear compressive cuffs when I sit. My energy level feels great. It keeps the blood flow moving. I make sure to get up for like five minutes out of every hour. That's what I talk about with massage therapy. So compression cuffs, foot massagers, there's thigh massagers out there. There's massage guns to loosen up those thick, knotted muscles. Take a look at these right here. Powerful ones, smaller ones for sitting in a chair. I love all these. They can work out the knots in your hips, your butt, your lower back, your thigh muscles, your calf muscles. As those knots get worked out, these massage guns become exponentially more effective and your leg gets better, blood flow starts moving. In order, I would usually say you need good support, then number two, you need good massage. Then number three, you need stretching. And then number four, those exercises. All four of those are really important for most cases. That right there, you can quit the list already. That's a very effective plan. Don't quit just yet. I still got some good stuff for you. But a study published in the Journal of Alternative Complementary Medicine in 2010 found that foot massage increased the blood flow velocity and enhanced vascular function in healthy individuals. Basically, the more massage you get, the looser your muscles are, the better the inflammatory fluids move, the less you swell the next day. Number seven, warm water soap. I'm a big fan of taking a bath using Epsom salts. So Epsom salts, not only do they clean off your thick, dry skin, if you have athlete's foot, toenail fungus, it'll help with that. Getting that inflammation from that thick, dry skin will decrease your swelling, your inflammation, because inflammation causes swelling and swelling causes inflammation. It's a vicious cycle. Warm water soaks with Epsom salts definitely improve circulation. A study in the Journal of Cardiology in 2017 demonstrated that warm water immersion actually improved blood flow and decreased resistance and peripheral arterial disease. Number eight, missing nutrients. This means good diet. If you're heavily overweight, you gotta lose some weight. If you're eating sugary foods and you have diabetes, you gotta correct all that. There are specific nutrients that help with poor blood circulation and poor blood flow. I have an amazing top 15 list for blood flow getting down and a top 19 list for swollen legs, varicose veins, all that kind of stuff. They're actually two different pathways. One is getting the blood flow down, that's the arteries. One is the veins getting the blood flow up. So they're two different systems, even though they both can result in swelling and pain in the feet. You want omega-3 fatty acids, you want some magnesium, you could use some rutin, you can eat vegetables, whole grains, fruits, meats, get your B vitamins in there. Realistically, you could even get a blood test to see what's missing. The bottom line is, to make it simple, cut out the garbage calories, the sugar, the high diabetes inducing food, all that unhealthy stuff, get natural healthy food like lean meats, healthy vegetables, green vegetables. This has been well studied. I could cite 8,000 articles, but this leads to healthy arterial blood flow and endothelial function and increases your health and ability to move around. Make sure you cut out the junk. I have guides, the top 29 worst foods for your blood flow, the top 15 and 19 supplements and foods for all of this. I have guides for all of it. Check those out. They include the studies. They're very detailed and in-depth. But you also wanna take a look at magnesium. That's a good one. Omega-3 fatty acids. Bromelain, that's one that's included here. I wouldn't put that at the top of my list, but it's included as one very well studied. Vitamin C is a lot, so your citrus fruits can make a big difference. Rutin is another great remedy, so rutin is a great supplement. I have the details in the videos below. 
Number nine, horse chestnut. I included this one specifically because it's a very popular one for swelling and varicose veins. It's mentioned by a lot of people, especially in the news. Horse chestnut extract has been traditionally used to support venous health, reduce swelling in the legs. It is believed to improve blood flow, strengthen capillaries, very well studied. There's a lot of studies out about horse chestnut. Check that out. I have some links to my, some of my favorites below. Hydration. Number 10, this sounds counterintuitive. Hydration, by drinking enough, it actually keeps your kidneys flowing. You don't retain as much salt. It kind of clears your body. Realistically, if you have congestive heart failure or kidney issue, drinking too much water can lead to some issues because you could retain some water weight, but we're talking for the people who don't have kidney failure and don't have congestive heart failure. But if you do, always check with your doctor because too much fluid could actually cause even more bloating. But we're talking for eating salts, things like that in your diet. You want blood flow to help maintain circulation you don't want your blood to be as dense as it is when it's dehydrated. You can look at your urine. If your urine's like a dark color when you pee, you're probably dehydrated. If it's nice and clear, you're probably well hydrated. I have a link for my favorite drink that includes a certain secret ingredients that keeps you well hydrated, and I tell you why. I include that link below. Nonetheless, eight glasses a day is probably a great start. 11, health issues. So diabetes peripheral arterial disease, smoking. If you have underlying health diseases, the number one thing you can do is work with your doctor to take care of that. So stop your smoking, stop eating sugar, lose some weight and put pr pressure off your heart. These are complex topics on their own, but the reason I mention them is, I know they're common sense, but the reality is this guide and every other YouTube guide is completely worthless if you don't fix these major underlying issues. A study published by the American Journal of Physiology, Heart and Circulatory Physiology in 2017 said, basically, if you have these issues, none of these tricks will work. So for example, if you're smoking, it doesn't make sense to just eat healthy. You have to stop smoking as well. Weight loss. I'm just gonna toss this fact out here. If I put one pound in a backpack, so pretend I was wearing a backpack right here. If I'm wearing a backpack and I put one pound and as I'm walking, that increases my surface pressure to my toes, to my feet by five pounds. So it's a five to one ratio. Forget about all the heart benefits, the kidney benefits, everything like that. For every one pound you lose, it's five pounds less on your foot when you're walking. That is huge. That should be a great motivator right there. Simply just wearing less clothes is less pressure on your feet. That's how you have to think about it. Get that weight down and get healthy. Avoid prolonged sitting. I talked about exercise, getting up and moving. Studies show that basically if you sit all day long, like three plus hours at a time, that is as dangerous for your health as smoke. Let me repeat that. As smoking one pack per day is as dangerous as sitting for more than three hours at a time. The reality is you gotta get up, you gotta get your blood circulating. If you sit at a desk all day, consider a stand-up desk. Consider getting up for five minutes every hour. If you're sitting in a car, you know, maybe do some leg pumps, do some exercises, that counts. There's always a solution. Stand-up desks are unbelievable. This has changed my life. Butt pain, hamstring, thigh pain, lower back pain, all gets immediately better. The studies verify this and combine it with a stretch mat. So these types of mats can stretch your calf muscles, your thighs, your hamstrings, your lower back, all while standing and you can sit down anytime. These are stable, they hold your computer, it's really the way to go. Now here are the two big secrets. The two biggest secrets that comes down to all of this stuff's worthless if you don't do these two things. And these are the number one things that I see. People who stand there all day, they have prior injuries. You could have a tight hip, a tight knee, a tight lower back, a prior injury, a prior sprained ankle. You have to get a biomechanical exam. What I mean by that is, if you're leaning more on one side or the other side, this is the most common problem I see with people. They usually have some type of arthritis or joint pain and they don't wear good shoes, they don't wear good orthotics, they don't wear good braces, they don't use a massage gun to work out those knots. Their muscle strength is not equal. They don't strength train, they don't equalize their body. And what happens is people lean more on one ankle, one foot, one knee, and that loads the ligaments and the joints unequally. This makes your joints throb, this makes your ligaments throb, this makes one muscle always overworked compared to the other one. 90% of the time, this is easily correctable. Anybody who I see for swelling and soreness 
and swollen feet and swollen ankles, this contributes to their problem. There's a lot of fluff now about barefoot shoes, that kind of thing, but you're already too sore. That's your problem. You, as someone with swollen feet, swollen ankles, you need to assess why you're unequal. You need to get your lower back, your hips, your knees, your feet checked. Hey, as a podiatrist, I would love to do that. I have a lot of great videos on a biomechanical analysis as well. I link those below. But basically, strength training, wearing good shoes, good orthotics, massaging your legs, getting up every hour, making sure you're equal, making sure you're not eating a crap diet of just sugar, making sure you're getting enough vitamins, that's the key. Basically, any patient I see, I would expect rapid improvement for them doing these things. If that helped, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and check out these videos.